Hey guys, what's up? It's Ryan Marr, and you're listening to Pizza Beer Revolution. Hit it! What's up, everybody? PBR Podcast, Mike Polano, Derek Dean, sitting in, Mr. Comedian, and, and apparently relative of many boxers, Mr. <laughs> Ryan Marr. Yeah, no, Ryan Marr, just, what's just, up? One, just one boxer? Yeah, what's going on, guys? How are you? Good, Good to man. Be here. How are you? Good Th- to be here, man. Thanks for coming out. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Good to be here. Oh, well, c- technically again. Yeah, can I just yeah. say, yeah. talk about that? We had, <laughs> let's talk about it. We had Ryan on the show once. and uh, Back in July. Yeah, it was yeah. Like back in the summer, and it was just me and him because you couldn't get back from Long Island or something. It was 100% a technological and uh, travel cluster. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. said it. Yeah, you I know what it. I mean? No, it was a good time. It was it, it was fun, and, and they all missed out on it. So now yeah. we're going to try to catch lightning in a bottle again. Yeah, we'll we're do back. it, right? Yeah, we're here. I was in a, in a basement in Long Island. Uh, I think when we started, we were trying, we were trying to do it over Skype, and we, we've had Skype guests on. Like, we try to not... Do anything it's a that's pain remote. In the ass. You know what yeah. I mean? Like yeah. We like to be in the room with the person. Yeah. And uh, I was out uh, in Long Island with family, and schedules just got crazy, and I couldn't get back. Yeah. Uh, so we tried to Skype. I remember Gat- there was a baby in well, the background. Well, Gatto and-, and I were in, in oh, Long yeah. Island, and you guys <laughs> yeah. were here, and we tried to Skype and, and cross. And like right when we started the show, we have a very large Italian family, and as soon as we started the show, they time. all showed up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which is and, like impossible. And then it was like, so we're in a basement. We can't get a good Wi Fi signal. We can't hear anybody. We're like trying to do it on. It was just, it was terrible. So we yeah. apologize oh, for no, that. It's but no big but deal. you're here now. I'm here now. And we're going to kill it. Let's do it. Right? I'm ready. Second oh, time, hey, we'd be better. What do you want to talk about? Second time's a charm. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan's a local from Jersey, too. He's, uh, you know, from yeah, Brick. Right, yeah, I'm right over, like, I'm on the bri- the border of Brick and Point. I mean, I could throw a rock I'm in Point Pleasant. And on the all other right. side, I'm in Brick. So yeah, it, it's, not a, it's not a big deal to come here at all. I'm in this area a lot, partying anyway, having a good time, so it always works out. So you are born and raised in, New- in Jersey? Uh, yeah, well, I was born in Hudson County, North Bergen. I was actually born in Secaucus. My mom uh, worked at Meadowlands Hospital, up in, like right near Giant Stadium. and uh, But I've been down here most of my life. I mean, we moved to the Jersey Shore, as they say, hey, when I was uh, hey, <laughs> almost seven. We all do. All right. So... Uh, yeah, I mean, I've been down here most of my life. This is pretty much home at this point. So your mom, your mom, you said your mom worked in a hospital. Yeah, she was a nurse. Did she? Did she? Te- did, your, did they meet? I want in my world. I want them to have met because your dad w- had like a horrible, uh, like a fight, and he was like, <laughs> it was like a Rocky Balboa. No, no, my dad wasn't a boxer. Your was grandfather, grandfather was a boxer. My grandfather was a boxer. Yeah. So you're, I, I want to believe that your grandfather was boxing your father. <laughs> <laughs> now, what did your dad? It do? could have been. Uh, my dad actually works for New Jersey Transit, which I did for a while too. He, but uh, he's in bus. I was in rail, and I gave that up to do comedy. And he hasn't talked to me since. Uh, no, I'm kidding. But he, uh, yeah, my dad, my I, what was he doing when he met my mom, though? He wasn't a bus driver. I think he was like a salesman or something. Rail, rail and comedy are, are very similar. What's that? Like, they're very similar jobs. Railroad and comedy? Yeah, you, you were in the car? I was a train conductor, yeah. Right, so you're dealing with people all the time. You're walking Yeah, but I, I, I don't like them, though. That's I mean, my point, so, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, comedy, I try to at least be nice to my audience members. But. And yeah, I think you had, well, your first comedy album was called Off the Rails. Yeah, because I, I, I was doing named. a closing bit about uh, train suicides. Because I was fascinated by the idea that if someone jumped in front of my train, I'd get three paid days off. <laughs> and I'd be right, like, right. that's almost like an incentive, you know? <laughs> yeah. I wish I wasn't on a track. I'd be steering that's into terrible. people. terrible. You know? I should tell you how my, uh, uh, my cousin passed away. Oh, sorry. No. Anyway, <laughs> no, I'm really not. I mean, I am, but I'm not. Well, because you know, it's, it's that, and that's the other thing, too, and I'm sure we can get into that, uh, about how with comedy, and, and the unfortunate thing is, is that I was doing that bit for about a year. And then there was like a here on the Jersey Shore, very Those tragic. Unfortunately, kids. there were a bunch of different kids yeah. that were <laughs> jumping in front of trains, and it was awful. But the thing was, was that now I'm like, shit, do I not do the bit? You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, right. It's like, I got a whole year off. This is great. I like, can work on my comedy. <laughs> but I mean, I was, I was, I had already left the railroad at that point. I had probably been gone about a year. So I just missed out on all of that. Thank God. I didn't really want to experience that. Uh, I only experienced it happening twice. You, you, you literally were conducting and yeah. it, two times. Two times. What is that? Do you want to talk about it? I mean, you want to talk uh, about Yeah. That? I mean, it's, it's gross. Do you see it coming? You saw it? You uh, or is it like, get out afterwards. I mean, is it like a, you're, you're driving down the street and in the winter, and a, and a snowball hits your car, you hear it, and then you look, or like the you know what happened. The only person who happened. really sees it is the engineer, oh, and okay. then you usually get notified. I mean, the only the only thing that I ever saw when we were in the cab car, because obviously as a conductor, you're not on the engine with the engineer, yeah. but when, you know, 
you're in the cab car because you can operate from either end. You'd go up and I'd sneak a cigarette in if the engineer smoked or whatever. And I remember the, the most gruesome thing that I actually witnessed Ugh. get hit was a deer. All right. And oh. it was that was in Trenton. And I mean, this thing, it was it was running on the tracks and we're like, oh, come on, move, man. And then we just boom. And it just you would hear it go underneath. Um, it doesn't affect the car at all. It could. It could. I mean, it could cause not a derailment necessarily, but it could cause a couple Jeez. of different issues that you'd have to get out and check. And, um, but yeah, I mean, we had two different people, but I wasn't the head conductor, so I only got out once. You know, um, it's the head conductor's responsibility. Oh, so you have to stop. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's the head conductor's responsibility to go out and well, assess yeah. the situation. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. And I went with him once, and uh, yeah, it was it was pretty gruesome. That's terrible. You know. But, you know. I, it, 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 it's it, it's so crazy because I, I ride the train all the time. I'm on the train mm -hmm. constantly to the city. And I was on one train one time where that happened. And uh, it's crazy to see people's reactions. People, be, Some people are literally They're like, mad, right? Jeez, oh, you yeah. decide today to kill yourself. And, like, and what did they say? Why don't you we just had, take a bag of pills? <clears throat> what did they say? Like, we have a, we had a trespasser on the tracks, right? Trespasser on the tracks. Exactly. Some, no, uh, one time, no, I think for that one, it was like, we've had a track fatality. Oh, wow. Or, 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 or no, no. When I heard that, it was wasn't our train. It was like two trains ahead of us. Okay, they said there was a track, there was a fatality on the track, and so we're delayed because of blah 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 blah. But one time, you know, going back to that whole thing about how you know, do I do the bit? Do I not do the bit? You know, more experienced comics than I at the time were like, "Fuck it, you got to do it. It's your bit." You know yeah. what I mean? And I'm like, "All right." So I did it one night at Uncle Vinny's Comedy Club in Point Pleasant, which is like my home club. I'm there pretty regularly, and I was at the time opening for Mitch Fatel. I don't know if you guys are familiar yeah. with Mitch, but uh, Mitch does a lot of very, uh, I guess you could call it sexually gratuitous material. There's jokes about date rape. It's all very funny, mm -hmm. and he gets away with it the way he delivers it. Uh, like, for example, one of his jokes is, uh, I went out on a date the other night, and I knew I was going to get laid because she left her drink at the table. <laughs> and everybody laughs. Yeah. Right? So at the end of the show, him and I are, are outside and, and I'm selling, I don't think I'm selling anything at the time. I don't even know if I had my CD yet. I might have, I might not have. But anyway, this woman comes out and I noticed when I was up there that she was into me until I did the train bit. And then I saw her like not laugh. Into you in the sense of like laughing. Yeah. yeah. Then Mitch is up there and he's doing his material and she's loving it. So she goes up to Mitch and she's like, I thought you were phenomenal. You were so great, so <laughs> funny. And now like, there's a crowd, you know, forming because everyone wants to either, you know, go to their cars or give us a compliment, whatever. And then she turns to me, she goes, but you, you're a fucking scumbag. And I just went, oh, I'm sorry you feel that way. Cause I knew yeah. what was coming, you know? Yeah. And she goes, uh, she goes, who, what kind of an animal jokes about suicide? And I said, well, miss, I said, you know, uh, it's something that I experienced. It's something that I wanted to talk about. And I feel that I try to do it in a way that can make something uncomfortable kind of funny. I think that's right. what comedians do. And she goes, no, it doesn't work that way. And I went, well, I'm sorry you feel that way. So I go back to talking to somebody else, and she just keeps going and going. Now it's getting attention, and, and people are, are watching. And she's like, you should be more like him. Oh. You're not like him. You're a scumbag. And I said, miss, I go, he was doing jokes about date rape. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what she said? Right. She goes, well, I was never raped. And I'm like, oh, so that fucking makes it okay? I'm like, look. I'm like, don't come right. to a comedy show then. She goes, I'll have you know, asshole. My nephew jumped in front of a train. And so I just couldn't help it. I'm like, well, it's not my fault you were a shitty aunt. Uh, uh, and then I just sh to shut her down. Because uh, like she's like, wow, he really, like, I don't want to spar with this guy. Well, the, and, and I did feel bad for going that far over the line. But it's like, what was I supposed to do? Like, that for minutes this girl was just fucking yeah. in my face I mean I, it's safe to say that every single act in the world because comedy comes from tragedy and stuff you absolutely know, everybody's gonna be offended by something man you gotta yeah, chill you, out you're at a comedy show you can't yeah that's the main thing you can't A expect to please everybody and B comedy is comedy like and you're hearing all these these like universities and stuff that are like they give you a list of what you can't talk about and I was like that's not how it works yeah. no. you know the, people joked you know, there's ways you can even joke about 9-11 and stuff and make it funny because you, you bring like you said no, you, can't. you know comedy <laughs> out of tragedy <laughs> yeah, no, wait, and I'm not saying joking wait, about 9-11 but way to bring the podcast to a screeching know, halt Derek you, communist no no I, actually to, to touch on that I was <laughs> fucking doing, Bernie Sanders uh, DerekD.com now <laughs> it forwards to ISIS website <laughs> yeah. to touch, join here well, Jesus, relax. Well, speaking of the college thing, though, the last uh, the last college I ever did, and I don't think I'll ever do another one. I did uh, Thomas College up in Waterville, Maine, and um, 
I remember it was the same thing. Like I, I went up there. And now here's the thing. I don't want to be disrespectful, but it, let's be honest here. I don't know if you guys went to college or not, but when, when you go to college, what were you doing on a Friday night? You were drinking, trying yeah, to meet girls, absolutely. having a good time. Yeah. And that doesn't happen and anymore. Because look, look what happened night. last night, that Donald Trump rally in Chicago. Now that's the new big thing. Let's, oh, let's go get our signs and protest. We don't want to meet women, assholes. But yeah. anyway, <laughs> um, so anyway, I go to the, do this college and I mean, I'm looking out into the audience and I'm seeing all these kids in like fucking Harry Potter sweatshirts and I'm like, oh, here we go. Yeah. Like I have the unfuckables in my audience today. <laughs> so now- Did I'm, you say that? No. That's a, oh, that'd be a great opening line. So yeah. now- well, over the crowd right So away. now I'm backstage and, uh, you know, it, it's the NACA, you know, people that put together, but it's all these student advisors that book you. So they come up to me and they hand me a sheet of paper and it literally is all this stuff that I can't talk about. Come on. And it says no size jokes. So I thought that meant, you know, Penis. like, well, yeah, that. Right. And like, don't make fun of oh, anybody like in the crowd people? or like do crowd work. <laughs> I was, so I fault. said, I go, <laughs> no size jokes. I go, what does that mean? She goes, oh, well, don't talk about people being too skinny or too fat. I said, well, I'm fat. I said, and I want to do some self-deprecating stuff to warm them up. No, no, just because you're comfortable with your size doesn't mean oh that it won't God. bring up issues for other people. And I'm like, are you fucking this kidding me? This is comedy. Me? It's yeah. no, it, it doesn't work worst. like that. It was the worst. And then the other experience that I had that really pissed me off at a college, I did uh, Quinnipiac, mm -hmm. and it was in their big auditorium. And it was the weekend... I guess it was like freshman weekend where like you're there for a couple months and then your parents come to see how the college life is treating you. Right. Yeah, yeah. So it was literally 2,000 people in the audit auditorium. I had to keep it very clean. Like to the point where parents were coming up to me afterwards and like, you were great, but we were expecting you to be like a little dirty. Like, you yeah. know, we're here with our college kids. You want to have fun. But, but, but what bothered me was when that show ended and I said, thank you, good night. The woman who's like the faculty advisor comes out and she says, oh, okay, guys. And if you want to keep the fun going over in such and such auditorium, we're going to be showing the movie Friends with Benefits with Justin Timberlake and Mila Kunis. The whole movie is about sex. Right. There's a million F-bombs. I think she's naked at one point, but yeah. I can't say shit or fuck while I'm on stage. Right. But here's the thing. Like once you're on stage, and you have the mic in your hand and the audience, you got the audience in your hand as well. They're on your side. What are they going to do? They're going to literally yeah, yank shut you? it down. That well, you'll never get booked again. Yeah. You know, or they'll put out a review about you. See, that works in comedy clubs. It doesn't, it doesn't work, work in colleges. In yeah. My friend Jay Black told a great story about, and he was voted NACA College Comedian of the Year a couple of years in a row. Uh, right after Hurricane Katrina, he opened for Patrice O'Neill. And I've gotten to work with Patrice many times before he passed at clubs and stuff, and it was a great experience. But he opened for him. I forget what the college was, but it was like 5,000 people were at this show. Mm -hmm. And he goes up. They told him, you have to be squeaky clean. And he was like, even though I'm opening for Patrice? And they're like, yeah. And this was right after Hurricane Katrina. So Jay does his 20-minute set. Where was it? it? I forget what college it was. It wasn't in New Orleans. No, no. Yeah, yeah. But this was just the time frame. Patrice goes up there, and the first words out of his mouth were, Fuck Hurricane Katrina. What do I care about them niggas out there? Mm -hmm. Is it going to affect my gas prices? And people started getting up in droves and walking out. But he's Patrice O'Neill. So if they wanted to complain about him, they'd be like, look, you knew what the fuck you were getting. Yeah. Ryan Marr, Jay Black. Right. We're just regular working comics. You know, we don't have... Uh, we have followings, but we're not names by any stretch. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you could say you knew what you were getting. Right. So it's, yeah, it's it's horrible though. It's it really is ridiculous how they curtail comedy now, and because everyone's offended by everything. It's just, I mean, it's not just, just comedy; it's every everything across the board. This, this young generation, this young like young young high school type kids, just like oh, you can't say that. No, everyone's everyone. Everyone could go to the same bathroom. No, no, you're a guy. You go to the guys' room. You're a chick. You go to the chicks' room. I don't care if you identify. It, as, you there's know. gonna be a breaking point. There's got to be a breaking point. There has it's gonna to go be. back, right? You know. But I, mean? I think we're seeing that now. I think we're and I think last night. I mean. Look, w whether you're a Donald Trump supporter or not, I think last night people are seeing these asshole college kids. E look, e even if some of them have points that are logical, and I'm not saying that some of them don't, mm -hmm. but when, I, when you're seeing how they're acting, and this isn't, we're in Chicago, we're not talking about, th these weren't black people acting out where you could even use that old racist argument. of mm -hmm. like, These were fucking regular lily white kids that are throwing shit at people's cars and having this sense of entitlement because they've grown up their whole life never getting their ass kicked. They never got punched in the face. I think like our generation, how old are you, Derek? I'm um, 34. All right, I'm going to be 33 in June. I feel like our group was like the last group where if you acted like a dick, someone might punch you in the face. Mm -hmm. And even then it was starting to get frowned upon. Yeah. But right underneath us, like my sister's age group, my sister's like 26, uh, you know, I, I, I even see some of the guys that she's hung out with over the years. And I'm like, man, this kid's never got 
gotten his ass kicked. <laughs> so he feels he could just say or do whatever the fuck he wants yeah. without any repercussions. This entire, you're right. They hit it, on, hit it on the nail on the head with that. Enti- like they had like, it all it, entitled. It's crazy. 100%. They had a kid on Fox last night and he just like, you know, because they're, they're going around to the protesters and most of the kids didn't even know what they were protesting. They just didn't like Donald Trump. Yeah. And they were trying to cover it by the fact of, oh, well, we don't want to share while we're protesting. Well, isn't that the point of a fucking protest? <laughs> but they go up to this one kid and he's just like, Fox News, Fox News, Fox News, yelling in their face. They're like, do you have anything original to say? And he's like, oh, well, you know, I'm proud to be a Chicagoan and Chicago cleaned up its mess tonight. I go, really? I go, you're standing behind police that you probably bash on social media. You want to clean up Chicago, go into the inner city. Go talk to the gang members that are shooting each other. You won't do that. No. You know? What was the root of the whole uprising? They didn't want Donald Trump to speak? They just speak? didn't want him to speak. Because first, because the First Amendment only applies to these people when right. it's something they agree with. What yeah. about the supporters of Donald Trump? They were trying to yell back, but you got to realize, what are they going to do? I mean, there were some young kids, which was nice to see. There were some kids that were like 18 to 25 that were there supporting Trump. Mm. But it was mostly people in their 40s and 50s. And uh, the one guy was like, this is what college is now? Like, this is how these kids act? And he goes, I'm a college alumni. Fuck you, mister. Well, you know what? But you know what, man? It's like, (laughs) and here's the thing that they're, they're rallying against Donald Trump and they're in college and they're in support of somebody who wants to give them college for free. The Democratic side. So yeah. so you're right. Like, they need to be punched in the face. They are entitled, and they think they should get everything, and that's why they're rallying against this. Like, you know, I'm not going to give out my political uh, opinions, but, I mean, Trump 2016. <laughs> but, like, seriously, they just want it, and give yeah. me, give me, give me, give me. Yeah. I think our generation should just have a battle royale and slap the <laughs> shit out of that generation. And then we get in trouble. I mean, like, there's whatever. just no... Tom, what do you think? Were you pissed, <laughs> were you pissed last night? I got to tell you something. Listen, <laughs> it's fantastic. It's Ryan Mark, kid. Fantastic. He's going to help me build the wall. I'm going to hire him as my personal White House comedian. And let me tell you something, Mike. You're an asshole. But other than that, I love you. Don, Don we know this. We know this. But, but yet, last night in Chicago, how did you feel? Listen. I mean, you wanted to talk, right? Yeah, I love Chi Town. Okay. I think it's fantastic. I think it's going to be a huge city. I'm going to win Illinois. Um, let me say something. The reason that I, I it, it went all to shit is because they're jealous. They want my money. And, uh, they're assholes. Now, Bernie, uh, Bernie Sanders <laughs> is here, everybody. Uh, Bernie, Bernie, did you did you actually put those college kids up to it? I told them <laughs> that we would go to the Trump rally and then make sure, make sure that you hold those signs up and and you you disrupt everything because you know what we need. Everyone is going to do everything for free, and we're going to get the middle class to pay for it. It's going to be fantastic. I mean, I don't want to say I sound like Trump, but uh, it's, it's no, you, amazing. You sound, you sound like a guy who should be running a fucking bagel shop in Brooklyn, yeah, exactly. which means it's a spot on Bernie Sanders. And then I don't understand, but every time Trump and Bernie Sanders are at a place together, uh, you know, Bruce Springsteen shows up. <laughs> I don't know. He only has one line that he says. Bruce, what did you say last night? <laughs> well down on the jersey. <laughs> That's it. All right. Thank you, Bruce Springsteen. Uh, so I wonder I if Bruce will show up. <laughs> it's crazy. So I don't know. I well, guess, if it's I guess don't pull me up, we'll, uh, I guess it's good that some kind of fire has been lit. You know, under, yeah, under, under. I, and I think, and I think what what this is really gonna do, and I could be wrong. I'm no political analyst, but I, I think that it's actually gonna support Trump instead of being a detriment. It's gonna even it's bad gonna boost po- him. Even you know, right? Even what? Damn it! Sixty percent. Even bad publicity is good publicity. Because I feel that there were people that might think that you know, and you know what else cracks me up too when you hear people go, "Oh, Trump's," you know, I just worry he's not very presidential. I'm like, oh, like the guy that we had there in the '90s who was sticking cigars in girls' seats in the Oval Office, like that was presidential. <laughs> like I just people forget so much yeah. you know and and uh, you know not to make this a whole political thing but I, I think it really just has a lot to do with society now and you know people are really voting for their entitlements it's not like it used to be where it's like well <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm a Clinton guy and I'm a George Bush mm-hmm. guy yeah. but you were still humans that had basic you know understanding of how life works now it's like you know the and the millennials are I believe there's more millennials now than there are even baby boomers so it's scary to think that they're the majority now. This entitlement is the majority. It's not Which like they're dumb kids anymore. They grow up. I mean, we were all, when we were younger, you know, we all felt a certain way, but we evolved. Mm. I don't see an evolution going on with these people. <laughs> you know? it, Where does it end? You it, know it, what I mean? Like, how, how do I, I, my argument is that, like, on both sides of the fence, right? I don't think it's really uh, a Democratic or Republican thing. Do you want everything you're entitled? Do you want everything paid for or you're big business and you want to build a wall? I think the problem is that it's gotten to become a two-party system and yeah. it never was intended to be. No, it never was. You know was. what I mean? And, and money and media kind of 
dictates who's Social allowed media, to be media. up on CNN yeah. debate and who could talk. Absolutely. Like if Ryan's going to run for president, you should be able to run for like you can, but no one will ever know. And you're never going to have enough money. To just do that. But maybe that's a good thing, though, too, because look at how many assholes are out there. And social media has given so many of those assholes voices that do we really need more of them? Maybe. I don't think so. Uh, I don't know. No, yeah, that's may, a but, like, you wanna, slippery slope. Well, yeah. look at your choices. There's not a good choice. There's not a good choice. Whoever is going to be president next probably isn't one of those people. The people that you're seeing right now. Well, who it can't be. It can't be. I don't know. Well, Somebody who else could it be? It's either going to be Hillary Sanders. No, Trump, it's not Cruz. though. It doesn't have to be that way. But that's the thing. But that's how the, it's going to be. But that's the problem with the system, man. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody thinks that. Most people listening yeah, to it, this podcast think that it has to be one of them. It doesn't. If Derek D goes want, writes it on the ballot, you yeah, can vote but, for Derek. But that's D. not how it works. But, it's, I mean, but it, you, you don't even get all ballot. You don't even that's get the, the problem. Ballot You're right. Maybe but that's the problem. Problem. What the, the thing is though that what you should be able to do is like, look, God, we don't really like if if. if for most people, like we don't really like any of these people. Right. Can we get someone else? Like Romney, come come back or uh, not oh even or not even not, like not that, even him. I'm know? just saying, like people, like whoever, you know, there should be another, there has to be a another savior, opportunity man. for other people. I to think come I in. think I think you're going to see that happen, dude. I don't think not anybody this time around. You don't think so? No, it's impossible. It's, it's not a, impossible. It is, for this time around. It is because you can't even get you can't even get. Uh, the, Jesse Ventura said this years ago, who before he wound up going off the deep end. He was like, I will not run for president as an independent. He said, because I can't get ballot access in all 50 states. If you can't even get on the ballots, there's no way you can win. Yeah. So it is impossible. You know, I mean, if there has to be massive overhaul of the system. If it's ever getting, I mean, if it ever is possible, the, the way technology is now, it's becoming more possible because, because of social media. You know what I mean? Like if you garnered up enough social media presence and everybody in the country, the young the rallied around you and were like fed up no. and you did have some valid points, good. you know, and you were pretty good. I think you we're seeing know. that now, though, with some of these people that are for Bernie Sanders, because, I mean, it is a grassroots movement, and it's, you know, a lot of it started from social media. He's not spending big money on, like, attack ads. It's a lot of it's social media advertising mm. with his misspellings and everything. The but. thing I do love about <laughs> Bernie and Trump, though, is that they are paying for it by themselves. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. And how about this, man? If you don't think that you can shake it up and, like, a third party can win or something like that, how about Trump and Bernie, vice president and president? I'd vote for no, that in a second. Those are two completely different ide ideologies. It but you find them middle ground you know what i mean uh, i don't know that that'd be interesting <laughs> yeah that I don't scares know. me i don't know how that would work but that'd be interesting <laughs> me i mean they're both i don't i don't know either but that's, listen, why, I, we're here. that's I love, why we're talking about it right listen i love bagels as much as the next guy okay <laughs> you know that locks and stuff delicious i don't i forget who said it so i'm not going to take credit for it but you know how they always do it before and the after of the president yeah. like when they're first elected oh, lots of people have done that right yeah. so if bernie sanders gets elected they said the, the, his, the crib keeper yeah <laughs> i forgot where i saw that maybe it was on your twitter feed <laughs> trouble just being i orange. didn't create i didn't create it but i did i think i did retweet it somewhere but <laughs> Trump will just be an orange. Well, I mean, what is it with the with the tanner though? Come on, dude, right? Like he kind of looks like a chick that I want to bang at Bar A. I <laughs> oh, 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 so funny you just brought up Bar A. Why is that? Well, because we're gonna talk about it a little oh, bit, nice, man. Nice. You hear that sexy music? That's there a uh, go. indicates we're gonna play a little top or bottom. It's a game we play on PBR. Right. Um, I'm gonna read you two things. You're gonna tell me if these two things were in a relationship. Which one would be on the top? Which one would be on the bottom? It's like tailored it. to you. So we're going to start with you. We're going to round right. table it. All right. Top or bottom, number one, Bar A or Jenkinson? Bar A, hands down. I, I think I think for the audience, we have a, a people, yeah. this is a global show. So you want to describe? All right. So, yeah, they're both nightclubs here on the Jersey Shore, but you can't really compare the two. I mean, when I first turned 21, I practically lived at Jenks. It's right by my house. I was there yeah. every Friday, Saturday. It's kind of gone downhill a little bit, and that's not, you know, I'm friends, actually, the owner is on my Facebook, and he'll probably listen to this. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> it's just, it's changed. It used to be open all year round. Now it's not. Mm. Um, it, I don't know. Maybe they'll come back. Ever since Hurricane Sandy, it's just kind of been like, meh. But Bar A, I mean, it's it's just a restaurant, bar, nightclub. It's like an all-purpose. It's like a theme park for adults. It's got everything. It's got a grotto. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how do you beat that? It's got everything. So, um I say I started hanging out there because one of the owners, uh, Tommy Janarone, he's an entertainment attorney, so he started to help me with like contracts for some of my gigs, and then it was cool because like he brought me around to everybody, so I always got the VIP treatment. Bar A, hands down, top Bar A. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I know Jenks as well. I mean, I grew up around here too, so I know Jenks as well. But Bar A, it, like you said, it's 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 huge, and it's, it's got a, <laughs> there's a lot going on there. It's a lot of fun, and uh, yeah, R Rise is good friends with the the owner, right? One of them, yeah, yeah. There, there's three guys. But um, Barre, I think was I have I have one for that. Okay. I think uh, it ranked nationally a couple years ago as the biggest supplier of seller of Bud Light or Miller, like whatever beer yeah. it is, like m like over 
any bar in Vegas or everything. It was like in the top three, like best selling yeah, profitable it's, it's bars. Every year when they the do like country. the top fifty nightclubs, it's always in like the top yeah. fifteen of those fifty. So bar A on top. It's actually called bar anticipation, but everyone yeah. calls it bar A. So that on top, Jenks on the bottom. Uh, I'm one of the. Uh, I'm gonna say, I, you know, I'm 40. I'll yeah. say that I'm from here. And I've never been to Jenkinsons. Okay. Really? I'm so proud of that fact that I refuse yeah, to. I will fun. never go there. Jenkinsons is fun. But no, in the summer, but can we all Listen, can we man. all agree that in the summer DJs tops everything? Well, I, 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 that's a a happy hour. I'll go there for a happy yeah. hour. We're not staying much. I'll longer go there for a happy hour. Get shit faced. That like nighttime won't. Bother and then go to bar. Me. Yeah. Um, I. So yeah, that's a, yeah. That happens. Bar A on top. I actually grew up uh, with the Janerones. Our families are very Ta- close. So I was talking about Tommy Janerone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So right. I, I remember when I was, I'm much. Young, I'm the last of my family, and he's okay. the oldest of his. Okay. And I remember as a kid going over there for dinner and playing in his shoes. Because <laughs> that's how big yeah. of a human being he is, and how yeah. big his big shoes dude. are. As a little kid, I would like get in his shoe. <laughs> I remember that. I don't know why. Tommy, it stands Tommy's out great people. Uh, top or bottom, number two, Andrew Dice Clay or Louis C.K. Dice. Uh, I. I mean, well, again, now that's something that has to have an explanation. Louis C.K. is brilliant. Louis C.K. Um, is an intellectual comic. I thought he killed it at the Oscars when he did that. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to see him host the Oscars next year. But Dice is. Um, Dice is like the rock star of comedy. Dice is on that same level. He was the first Dane Cook, if you think about it. He was you the know, first one to sell out Madison Square, Square right? Garden. He was the first guy that made it like comedy was rock and roll. And, yeah. and you know, when people ask me, I would never want to compare myself to those guys. But when people ask me, like, who do you emulate? Who are your influences? Of course, you know, you have Bill Hicks and, and, and George Carlin. But I want to be the rock star guy. Yeah. I want it because I can't play any instruments. So if I could do it through comedy, that's great. And fucking dice, and and you know what? He's book on it. Yeah, and he's one of those guys that keeps reinventing himself. Like he's he's coming back. He's gonna have a new series on Showtime. It's called Dice, and it's it's him playing himself. And uh, and he's a cool guy. I've gotten to work with him a couple times, and he's helped me out with some things. Dice top definitely. He's gonna be at the Paramount in Asbury Park this summer. Yeah. Uh, we actually reached out to him to be on the show, but we couldn't get him. He was, uh, he's not doing uh, media, press. Um, but Ford Fairlane. Oh, classic. I mean, classic, but not enough people have seen it. If you cult, haven't, cult classic. If you haven't yeah. seen it and you're listening to this podcast, go on Netflix if it's on there, and you yeah. got to watch Ford Fairlane. The Adventures of Ford Fairlane. It's brilliant, yeah. man. It is. Al Bundy's in it. Gilbert Gottfried. Yeah, I think, you know, Dice, I like how he keeps uh, reinventing himself. Like, he was he was in that movie Blue Ivy. Yeah. He was in... He's in he I, was in vinyl. Vinyl, yeah. Oh, he was amazing. I don't want to give away what happens, but... Oh, I didn't but see that yet. It's, it's worth watching. I only watched the first and second episode, but, like, his character, although, sh- spoiler, short-lived, is uh, it's great in there. I just said I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, yeah, I didn't tell you what happens. You just, he gets killed in the... No, he could, he could leave. <laughs> He's like, I'm out of here. <laughs> Dennis, take it off my cue. No, you'll see what happens. <laughs> you'll see what happens. Oh, um, great show, God. It already aired, so... It's okay. Um, so uh, yeah, Louis C- Louis C.K. is is great too. Uh, but yeah, I think I, gotta go, I think I gotta go dice on top. I was a big fan of uh, I am a big fan of Louis, but I loved his first show on HBO with uh, Jim Norton. Yeah, Life of Louis. Loved it, and then yeah. I started watching the second one, and it got like really dark, and it kind of rang too much true where I didn't yeah. love it because it was. I don't show like shows that make me uncomfortable. Like my my I don't like The Office, yeah. which blows people away because my father reminds me of. Um, the main character. I never watched The Office, so yeah. I don't really know. Not, not you know, <laughs> not that my dad's listening to this. He's driving his house somewhere right now. But. I never watched it really <laughs> either. The Office. I, I liked the episodes I watched, but I never like was religiously watching that show. So I'm gonna put Dice on top because I, you know, I respect him for all yeah. the reasons we've said. You know, and he's always, he's never come out and and tried to not be Dice. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Like he stuck through it. When people hated him, he yeah. was still him. And it was F you ever. I'm going to be who I am. No, he's he's the best. Yeah, and just in your face, rock star guy. So dice top. Top or bottom number three. You're going to do stand up. You'd rather do it in New York City or in New Jersey. I just want to go out on. I just want to point it out for the world that I did not write that one. I think that's probably a no brainer. No, it's not. It, well, here's the thing. <laughs> no, no offense, Frankie. No, New York City is is weird. Like I, I was working danger fields regularly and I, you know, would work the comic strip and, and stuff like that. I would say, here's why I'm gonna go with New Jersey. I'm gonna top New Jersey. And and the reason why I'll top anywhere, because I'm not a city comic. To be a city comic, you gotta just worry about doing your twenty minutes. There's eight guys on a show. Yeah. Um unless you're doing Caroline's or Gotham where it's like, you know, 
three acts, an MC middle, and a headliner, you're going into a, a club where there's eight comics. And a lot of these people are pulled in from Times Square because they got free tickets. And, right. you know, a lot of them are from Switzerland. And they say, oh, Rodney Dangerfield's club. And then they go in. Yeah. When you perform anywhere else in the country, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, wherever, these are people that are laying out 25, 30 bucks because they're like, I want to go see a comedy show and I want to laugh. It's a much more captive audience. I mean, there were nights at Dangerfields where there'd be 200 people and maybe seven of them spoke English. Right. And it was fun. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's so, brutal. Yeah, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to top Jersey. I'm going to top anywhere but New York. Oh, well, shit. Frankie, I apologize. You should. That was a good one. Didn't you, didn't you hear what he said in the beginning? Muted that microphone. Derek. <laughs> <laughs> Derek, sorry about that. It's the power of the board. Yeah. All right. That's all right. <laughs> you know, I, I think, you know, obviously I'm I'm from Jersey and I love Jersey. But uh, what, when I was pounding the pavement hard doing stand-up, it was all in New York City. And, uh, man, there were some bad nights. But I think those bad nights, like, obviously cultivate your comedy and, like, get that experience of bombing and... You know, it, it, oh, you can and, get that and, experience in anywhere. No, no, though. you could definitely get yeah. that experience anywhere. But like, in, 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 I guess it's like you know, New York City is like the hub of stand-up comedy. But I, I think comedy the, bomb, there the bombing LA. there, I, the bombing there is different because, you know, and, and again, I started at Uncle Vinny's where it was like an outside company would rent his room for an mm. open mic. Yeah, and it was a tournament. And these are my first times on stage, and I kept winning, round after round. And I became cocky because I'm like, I've never even done this before, and I'm beating these people that have been doing it three, four, five years. Yeah. So when I won the whole tournament, my prize was a paid spot at Uncle Vinny's opening for Jackie Martling, who is a completely different style of you know comedy. He's mm -hmm. basically just memorizes He's a joke, jokes, joke books, yeah. jokes, and then goes up and does them. But anyway, this audience that came to see Jackie Martling were people that paid fifty-five dollars. You know, doctors, lawyers, fifty-five dollars. This was back in 06. This was like so. This wasn't too far removed from his Howard Stern fame yeah. and all that. And it was a small, intimate venue, 110 seats. And I remember Dino, the owner of Uncle Vinny's, coming up to me, going, "All right, uh, do five minutes." And I remember Jeez. being like, "Are you fucking kidding me? I just won this tournament. I was doing a different five, five minutes, minutes is nothing, week. yeah." And but it was it, my act was bullshit because I was winning open mics with it. The audience at the open mics were parents of the other people that were doing it, uh, family members, people my age. Yeah. Now it's people that paid fifty-five bucks and they want to fucking see a show. And you I went make up them there laugh, right? and I ate it. And with, within thirty seconds, I was like, I want to get off. I mean, I, I toughed it out, yeah. but that five minutes was brutal because I didn't have. Five Did you minutes. get a laugh? I think I got like maybe one or two like courtesy laughs, but it, it was nothing. It was the definition of a bomb. Does Jackie say anything? Um. Like, he, thanks a lot, kid. No, <laughs> nah, I mean, I've worked with him so many times since, and, and now we're friends, and, and, you know, he'll bring it up every, from time to time, yeah. being like, man, remember that night? And I'm like, yeah, I do. Because I had a decision I had to make after that. It's like, do I want to keep doing this with yeah. the bullshit, or do I want to learn how to actually get good at this? So I feel like in the city sometimes, when, when you're doing these bringer shows in the beginning where you've know, uh, you got to bring yeah. 10 people for stage time, all your friends are like, oh, man, you did great. Yeah. And I think it just gives you a false... Yeah, you can't really judge it on, on yeah. that. you got to judge it on people that don't know you, yeah. just go up there, do your or thing. Or who paid real money. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, I, I think, I've, I guess because my... I mean, I did like Rascals and a, 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 some other, a, other comedy... What was, what's um, up in uh, North Jersey? The, uh, why am I drawing a blank? What's the comedy club in North... In, in, uh, uh, well, it was Rascals and now not, that's not, gone. Um, how, bananas? Bananas. Um, yeah, there, Rascals. Rascals in up there and Rascals in Ocean when it was yeah. still around. But uh, I think I would go New York on top because that's where I did most of my stand up when I was like pounding the pavement hard with comedy, with, with stand up. But uh, yeah, but you could bomb anywhere. I wasn't saying you could only bomb. Yeah. It's just like I, think I bombed the most in New York in the beginning. <laughs> you, have, you have a four? Yeah, top or bottom? Uh, if you had to pick, Hillary or Bernie? Oh, <laughs> you gotta pick one. <laughs> I have to. All right, um, Bernie. Yeah, Bernie on top. Because I, because even though I think he's, I think Bernie Sanders to me is like the old homeless guy that you would see at the park. Talk about not being presidential. You can't that, see that guy. Yeah, like, he's that, like, like if it was like the 1970s, you would be like, oh, that's crazy, Bernie. Yeah, you know, yeah. go give him a sandwich. I loved him on the Larry yeah. Sanders show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like if if that, the fact that we've devolved so far as a society, this fucking kook is considered. But I'll tell you what, I, I do believe that he does have good intentions, as wrong as they may be. Um, and Hillary Clinton just, ugh. No way. She's the devil. Uh, you know <laughs> what, man? I, I wouldn't go that far, but after I'm a big fan of House of Cards on Netflix. Mm -hmm. 
And, you know, for anyone that's listening that's watched that show, watch that show and tell me if you don't just see the Clintons all over that. I mean, that to me, that is like... A, I, I feel like she has no... She really just wants to be president. Like, yeah. Now, yeah, her husband... I right? mean, now all these women... And these women were coming forward back then, but now, like... I mean, her husband's an alleged rapist, you know, and, and here's this woman coming up here talking about, you know, oh, I, I, you know, I'm all about women's rights. And are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. There's there's like nine different women that are claiming that your husband raped them, not had an affair with, raped them. It's and crazy. you're up there like discounting that. I don't know. I just, I she sucks. I, yeah, I, I I agree. Like, I, there's no, like, I have no problem with a woman being president, just not Hillary Clinton. Um, so yeah, I would go Bernie on top because like feel the like, burn. Like what I said, I think his intentions are there, but it's like, dude, who do you think is gonna pay for all that crap? Like, yeah. like my, my worst, my worst nightmare. No one's talking about the middle class in this. Is, is, it's all about like immigration and all yeah. this stuff. No one's talking about the people mm. that get railed up the ass for their, their taxes. Oh, Derek hi, D. Hi, com. Sir. hi, sir. <laughs> Derek D. Dot com if you want to see videos of that. Uh, uh, my worst nightmare is it's uh, Cruz and Hillary at the end. Uh, you know, so I, you know, feel the burn on that one. I, then I'd go Cruz. Oh, he, he is, he, I say she's like the devil, like in Jess, because she's like this evil bag, but he reminds me of like the, like Lucifer. He's in a, a suit. Well, yeah. He's, you know what I mean? Like he's evangelist. A he's a creepy looking guy, but you know what? He, he's, he's the next best thing to Trump as far as pissing off the establishment and, and, and things of that nature. Cause yeah, no. I, you look, realize Donald Trump has to be, get elected for Derek's comedy career. Right. Yeah, oh, absolutely. <laughs> like, he has to get Trump. elected for the for the benefit of the country. <laughs> I'm Trump all the way. I, I. But what I will say is, is that at this point, it's, it's anyone over Hillary. Yeah, I mean, that's agreed. how I feel. I think Top, most people feel that way. To be quite yeah. honest. Top or bottom number five: uh, blue comedy or clean comedy. Uh, honest comedy, top blue. Like to me, you don't separate the two. I mean, there are situations where I have to be clean if I get hired for certain corporate gigs and stuff, and I can do it. But to me, if you're an adult, you go to a comedy show, you should be able to hear whatever. Am I overly filthy? No. No, but um, if someone's getting hit by a train and a joke, you shouldn't get pissed off about it, Exactly. Right? So I, I, I'm considered edgy. To me, when someone says keep it clean, that just means, okay, don't talk about gratuitous sex and don't curse. But in some minds now, it's about content. You know, I always thought clean just meant don't say fuck or shit, right, you know? Right. Yeah. But it's not that. So, yeah, I mean, I'm going to have to top blue. Just be honest and, and be funny. And it, But, again, there, there's ways of being clever about it. I mean, I've done I've seen some of these open mics where it's like we would have these guys that would go up and be like, yeah, so I was found a curse on this girl's face. And it's like, where's the joke? Yeah. You know? Yeah. If you can, if you can craft... Uh, a perfect joke. Like I, uh, this last season, the last comic standing, I use this as an example because I teach comedy workshops. And there was a comic on last comic standing, very funny guy. His name is Joe Mackey, and he did one of the best uncomfortable jokes I've ever seen on TV. This was NBC last comic standing. He's talking about um, I'm gonna fuck it up now because I'm on the spot. But basically, he was talking about ordering a pizza, and on the pizza box was a drawing of the World Trade Center. And it said, never forget, you know, and he was like, and I thought that was just so tacky. Never forget. He goes, and I'm looking at it. And then I realized they forgot my mozzarella sticks <laughs> and like the place. But like, I mean, of course, that wasn't the full joke, but he, he built it though. up. <laughs> he built it up and you're like, oh, my God, where is he going with this? Yeah, like, yeah. is he going to say something like really fucked up about the buildings collapsing or people dying? <laughs> I love and then, that. And, and then it, it was one of the most brilliant, clean, yeah. yet edgy jokes. Yeah. Now, of course, people went on Twitter and they complained and said how insensitive because they're snuck. But really, that was the definition of like clean, edgy comedy. Yeah. So it can be done, but I'm going to have to top with blue. Yeah, I think uh, there's different kinds of blue. Like, you don't want to go up there. Like, I've, I curse on style. I'll drop an F bomb here and there and say shit. I'm sorry, I just used the C word. So <laughs> that's what talking about. <laughs> but like, I, I won't, uh, you know, I'm not going to be like talking about. You know, real vulgar sexual stuff. That's what I can more consider blue. But uh, so I think clean comedy is just as long as you're uh, not being overly grotesque. No. Oh. You know. And look, if you're being honest in comedy, I mean, you're talking about what you can relate to. And, and it's at its purest form, too. And we're Jersey guys that we go out a lot. You know, we're single. We hang out with girls. Things happen. You know, that's the, what we talk about. So it's like, how, do, how is that not? Cross into that blue territory. Yeah, it's 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 life. Yeah. You know. So I think blue on top, but in the sense I of agree. Like just, I agree completely. Man. You know, not overly grotesque like yeah. like you were saying, these open mic guys go up there and think that's funny. It's like that's not comedy, that's just you being an ass. I had a situation up in Connecticut where I was uh 
doing a spot and I was like I was they, it was an open mic but they paid me to like close out the show and they go right before you go up we have this kid who's never done comedy before and I'm like oh Jesus you know but, I feel, <laughs> yeah. but I'm thinking like okay maybe he's serious and he goes up there and he's like yeah man my sister has this stuffed animal it's called the purple monster and uh, I, I drilled a hole in it and I fuck it and I'm like, oh Jesus Christ! Like uh, I have to follow this? Like, yeah. like what? Makes what not you- to do? That's the same feeling Jackie the Joke Man had that night. You're, open for- <laughs> <laughs> You're probably right. But what makes me? But at least I mean, my jokes that I did with Jackie weren't funny, but they were still jokes. They had that setup of a joke. Yeah, yeah. yeah they just weren't punch. good. Yeah. You know? Yeah, what you're uh, describing is what Derek talks about is the PewDiePie complex. Yeah. You know Pewdie- PewDiePie? Yeah. <laughs> like the most followed person on YouTube for no reason. Because he's. Exactly. He gets so it's, mad. It's insane. I know. But what bothers me, though, t- yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, that's another thing. Is that this business as a whole is a lottery ticket. Like I saw, I've seen, I'm a huge fan of the stuff that he, Derek's put on uh, on YouTube. The fact that that Bolton Beach thing didn't go viral. But you know why it didn't go viral? Because you had to sit there and watch it. You know, what What goes viral? These fucking. Vic Batetto, who's one of my best friends in the business, he had bread and milk. Oh, the bread and milk guy, yeah. Okay. But do you know how many vignettes he's done that he'll even admit blew that out of the water? But that was a, what, 20-second clip because that's the attention span of these fucking people. Yeah, man. People, first of all, I mean, we appreciated that. And even if you're not a Michael Bolton fan, it was still funny. (laughs) But as a kid that's 21 years old that is into fucking Jenna Marbles Mm -hmm. or one of these other assholes, are they going to sit and watch something like that? No. You know, Instagram doesn't do 15-second videos for no reason. Exactly. Or or Vine, six seconds. Yeah. Yeah. That's just the way it is. Yeah, so uh, that that's the thing. I mean, you know, you see all these people that are becoming famous off of YouTube and, and everything, and it, it's ridiculous. It's crazy. Yeah. So <laughs> we, we were talking about... I agree with that one. We were talking about earlier, um, you know, your parents. And, like, Pete, Pizza Beer Revolution, you know, Pizza Beer is what gets us in the room, but the show really is all about the revolution. So I just wanted to kind of get back to that, man. Your, your parents bring you down to Jersey when you're, like, seven years old. Yeah. Bring us down the path of what really makes you, what drives you to go into comedy. Like, what was your influence there? Um, you know what? My whole life, I was always the kid that would make people laugh. Like, when I lived up in North Jersey, we I lived in a two-family house where it was, you know, my mom and dad obviously upstairs. And then downstairs was this woman who was like my third grandmother, very close friend of the family, and her two daughters. And I was always around adults. And it was that Hudson County, um, everyone's smoking cigarettes, drinking coffee. To the point of where, like, I was in so many ways more mature than kids my age, but I'm mm-hmm. um, immature in so many ways, too. More mature, <laughs> like, like I was the kid, like, when we were in uh, fifth grade, and that was when people started, quote-unquote, dating. And it was like, you know, oh, well, I'm going out with Cindy. I'm like, where the fuck are you going? You know, what are you, what are you getting on a bike and going over there? I'm like, shut up. You know, like, I was always that kid. Like, so I always had, like, that adult edge to me. Yeah. Um, I was the guy that... I don't even know if in school, maybe in high school, uh, my classmates thought I was funny. But in elementary school, I was always the guy that made the teachers laugh, where the teachers would get pissed because they were like, all right, you know, that's funny, but you can't do that. Inappropriate. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, you yeah know? it's tough. Um, so yeah, in, in a lot of ways, I was always way more mature than people. But I mean, look, now I'm going to be 33 and I'm still a lot more immature than, than people my age group. You know what I mean? I'm still yeah. going out having fun. So I don't know. I was always that type of guy. And I think my first love was always pro wrestling. And I actually, at 16, was in the pro wrestling business and doing the independent wrestling shows as a manager and a ring announcer and, and like, you know, the bad guy manager that would be cutting the promos on the crowd. And so, you know, I'd have people say to me, well, why don't you try out for the drama club? And I'm like, I'm not doing that. That's gay, you know, (laughs) like, which I wish I had because who knows what it would have, you know, what else, what other experiences it could have given me. But I mean, it's, it's the same. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, so I was doing all that stuff and... Then it got to a point where it was like, I'm, I'm going to school. And I didn't really like college. And then, uh, yeah, so now what am I going to do? Now, now I'm 21, 22. I finally, I get on the railroad, you know, because my parents made me apply when I left college. They're like, look, you have to fucking yeah. do something to plan. And I just, I was miserable. And I did my first open mic while I was a train conductor. And my girlfriend at the time was very supportive. She was like, oh, you know, you should go for it. Until, of course, I started to do it and make money. And then she's like, what, you're going to be away every weekend? And, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. But at first, no, chase your dreams, honey. And yeah. then it was like, oh, do you have to take a picture with that girl after the show? Right. But, uh, yeah, so I, it just kind of was one of those things where I was like, you know what, fuck it. I'm, I'm going to give it a shot, and I'm going to see what happens. And, look, it's still a, a hustle. 
I mean, I've been doing it now. It's going to be in October, 10 years, which yeah. is mind-blowing. Yeah. But I've been doing it full-time since, like, 09. It's got to feel good, right? It does. You know, I mean, I, I miss the health benefits. That's the only thing I really miss about the railroad. But I was <laughs> miserable, man. And I, and I saw myself... <laughs> You know, I was 22 working there, and I would see these guys that were in their 50s that were married to women they hated, had kids that didn't appreciate them, mm. and literally just had- I still that's, I see those guys every yeah, day. <laughs> and just had to get out of bed, and they were fucking just, oh, just dregs of society, just miserable. And I'm like, do I really want to be that? You know what I mean? Like, I remember I was 22, I had the job, and I bought a brand new Mustang. And I still have it, because, uh, you know, I'm poor now. But I remember when I bought this car, I was paying, like, 600 a month. And, like, these guys that were in their 50s, like, hated me for it. I'm like, well, you could have a Mustang. Right, like, you nobody made the, can. You I'm made like, the choice to have kids and yeah. get married, right? I mean... Like, so... Uh, you're right, and I see these guys, like, they're get taking your tickets, and they're uh, punching the thing, and they just look miserable oh, yeah. and they hate their job they're about to go on strike now and then uh, no, they just settled less oh they did because they're pussies that, that's good for me on monday it's good though. for you but they're pussies <laughs> they but uh walked but it's it's so it's they're so miserable some of them don't get me wrong all some are very like hey how you doing good morning like yeah. they're, i'm like that's those are the guys with seniority they're happy yeah and uh <laughs> but yeah a firm believer and you got to do what you love to do and i love the fact that you were like i'm miserable I don't care about health benefits. I don't care about that. I just need to go I and do I what I, I love to do. I wish I had to do that. But, well, but hold you know? on. See, now that's where I have to cut you off because I can't take all the credit. Look, I mean, at the time, it was my family, my parents. They're like, okay, you can live here. You can – if I was, you know – if I was somebody that was 22 and living out on my own and didn't have a family that was supportive, I don't know if I would have been able to because I would have been poor. I Same been as me. Yeah. I lived at home for a long time, and yeah, my parents supported what I was doing. Well, I was waitering and substitute teaching and auditioning constantly and doing stand up. And yeah, that, that's but that's you have to do. You either do it or yeah. you don't do it. You exactly. go get a job in a bank or go be a great. You know, I'll use and my you have something now. I mean, you're more established in, in, in that realm than I am because you have something steady. Uh, I mean, I'm still. Look, I mean, I can I, I can regularly work stand up, you mm. know, and I started doing like bar bingo and trivia. I have like a little business going with that, but I mean, you know, you you found a niche and it's working for you, and but I mean, you know, still that you know, for if you want to go a step up, you know, it's just it's not always guaranteed. So you have to keep yeah. going out and 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 doing auditions, and I'm constantly and auditioning tough. still, yeah, like, all the time, yeah, and uh, not getting things, getting things, and it that's just the way it is. I mean, it's always what's next. Yeah, it's 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 a t it's a rack. It, man, and it always will be. But Andrew, does that make it fun, though? It's it's a life that's it even does. though sometimes it's fucking terrible. It's 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 that roller coaster ride of ups and downs, and it's not this steady thing. This is gonna happen but let me every ask you, day. And not that I want to be in a relationship, but let me, and this is getting like personal. But sure. you know, let me ask you this: if 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 you ever felt this way, have you ever met somebody like that? We're like, wow, man, she's awesome, you know. But you're like, fuck, I can't. And, and you still maybe go for it, whatever. But you feel you can't bring something to the table because you're like, wow, wait a minute, she's uh, she, she you know, she's a pharmaceutical rep. She's making like two hundred thousand dollars a year. Uh, yeah, I'm doing dick jokes, and and like, not that you're looking down on yourself because I know I'm fucking talented and I know I should be making great money. And I and if you don't believe, especially if you have ten years in comedy, that you shouldn't be a huge star, yeah, then then get the fuck out, right? But you gotta I have that confidence. I sure. haven't had that happen yet, so it's like you know. Uh, how do I say to this girl, oh, okay, well, I'm going to be going to Allentown, Pennsylvania next weekend for $700. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So it, it's kind of, it, it's one of those things. Do you ever, do you ever fall, feel that way? Because like your job is always a hustle and some of these people are more established. Uh, I don't know if I've ever felt that way in particular, but I've def definitely felt a sense where like, it's like, wow, I, I really, I really like this girl and I, but I don't, can't commit, I can't commit to what she wants so i gotta end this even it, it's it not even a matter of what she wants and it's, it's like just, it's just feeling like uh like uh, incompatible I, I because mean, she, yes, she makes yes. more more not money not because she makes more money but like just like she has a routine she has a set thing whereas you or i can get a phone call where hey you gotta go here you gotta go there yeah, but, and it's yes. a lot to answer, to answer yeah to actually yeah and not necessarily answer your questions is simple though because if the woman isn't on board with that man, it's not the right it's one. It's not no, the right I, one. I agree. I, yeah. Look, oh, please. This isn't like a fucking Dear Abby. I'm not saying that. I, I get that. <laughs> but I had the flip side of it. I mean, I had somebody who I was with, granted, before I was doing it, mm -hmm. and, and and she was all about it. And then every girl I've dated since, um, they think it, it, it's always the same thing. It's like for the first six weeks, they're like, oh, my God, you're so funny. I think that's what's that's what's so great about you. you always make me laugh. And then like you know, three months later, is everything a fucking joke to you? And it's like, well, yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> absolutely. I essentially <laughs> do that for a living. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. So um, 
but yeah, so that's what it, what it is. And, and look, it's not always a glamorous thing. I mean, I could do the Borgata in Atlantic City two weeks a year. That's the thing about stand-up. It's peaks and valleys. I remember the first time I did Borgata, I'm like, holy shit, man. I'm in the music box, the thousand seats, sold out every night. And I'm living in the hotel. I mean, they give you a beautiful room in Borgata. All your meals are comped. I mean, I remember the one year I was there. How long? For like a week? You're there for a full week, dude. Yeah. Seven days. And you're off Friday, Saturday. They just let you hop there because the, with the music box will then like the first time I was there. Oh, because they'll have like a big like a yeah. big musical act. Or yeah, something. they had yeah. Matchbox Twenty. Yeah. So like they're like, look, but we need you on standby. Or because like if there's a comedian, like uh, the my one buddy got to open for Lewis Black because Lewis Black was there the Friday Saturday and his opener got sick. So they're like, look, we have this guy on standby. So they try to like they tell you to stay. Yeah. So they give you the hotel room even when you're off. That's so awesome. I have my friends coming down on party and I'm like, fuck man, this is rock star. I have my mom calling me going, oh, are you okay? It's really chilly out there. I'm like, mom, I haven't been outdoors in six days. <laughs> I've been in the yeah. casino. you know. So it's one of those things. And then a week later or two weeks later, I'm in San Antonio in this fucking rundown condo because the club was too cheap to give me a hotel. Roach infested, disgusting. So that's the peaks and valleys of this business. Especially yeah, for man. stand-ups. Especially yeah. stand-ups cro- do, doing the country grind, man. That's across the board. And know? I remember meeting like this girl like who saw me at Borgata. We were only dating like a couple weeks, and she's like, you know, that was the first gig she came to. And I remember just saying to her, I'm like, I'm telling you, it's not all like this. <laughs> I'm like, this is the crown jewel gig. You just happen to be here. This is your first one. I'm telling you, it's not like this. When yeah. I uh, when I toured, I did a show for the New York Rangers. Okay. Uh, and I, so I traveled with them during the playoffs, and I was in Canada. No matter, we were in Canada. We were in Washington, all over the place. But we stayed with the team, so we were at the yeah. Ritz Carlton, oh, wow. the Four Seasons. You know, so I was just in Vegas shooting on Impractical Jokers. They yeah. put me in the <laughs> worst. I stayed in my hotel room for for thirty minutes, maybe. It looked like a crime scene. Uh. You know what I mean? Like, so when you go for it's in not Vegas? just in Vegas. We Where? Were, Where it was, was it? at the Suckosphere, like the Stratosphere. <laughs> It's like, that bad there? Dude, I would not stay there. I, w- I checked out. I went to the Aria. Because I'm, I went I, I'm, I'm going um, next April. I have a couple meetings out there, and I actually booked Hooters because it's the cheapest. It's right across the street. But Hooters, right there. Hooters didn't look. I mean, I, I've heard that. Look, it's it's cheap, but I heard it's not bad. I mean, I've the, always. Stayed I've never been. The there. guy dropped me off. The cab driver dropped me off. He goes, "Whatever you do, when if you leave this hotel, do not walk around the backside of it. If you walk this way towards the strip, you're good. You walk around the backside, you'll be murdered." At Hooters? Well, it's right next to the Stratosphere. Oh, so I was at the Stratosphere. Christ. I checked in. I was. I went upstairs. I looked around. There was there was like blood stains on the wall. <laughs> the t- the, like the, the Stratosphere. Ba- yeah, dude. The bathtub was like peeling off. You know what I mean? There was no hot water. There was uh, no air conditioning or and or heat. No, it was it was terrible. And I checked out. I went to the Aria. I was there for five days filming. Yeah. I spent more money on my hotel room because I refused to stay there than I made, you know. But I would not stay there, dude. Oh, now you have me all nervous about Hooters because I stayed at Riviera. Well, it's a totally different hotel, so yeah. I never, you know, I didn't go to. Hooters. I never stayed at Hooters. But no, but you said that where, where Hooters is. I like. Hooters. Well, they're next to each other, but that doesn't. There's actually the SLS is brand new. Is right there. Well, so, I already booked Hooters though. They already have yeah. my money. No, I don't. I don't know if Hooters is. Bad. I stayed at Riviera last year just because I had a week of gigs in Reno. And I was meeting my buddies out for the nightclub convention. So I was like, fuck it. I just want to go cheap. You know, I'm, sure. I, my Reno money is pr- basically paying for this vacation. And I stayed at the Riviera. They were closing in July. And I stayed there in March. And it was old, but at least it was clean. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's but the problem with the Riviera right? was I saved all that money. They were charging like 30 bucks a night. But it was so far down the end of the strip that yeah. you get killed in the cabs. Yep. Mm. You know? It's another, yeah, it was, it was uh, when I had to meet the crew from the Aria to um, to the Suckosphere, it was like a $25, $30 cab ride oh, wow. like that bites into it man yeah. i mean got, that, 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 like any in any across the board in the entertainment industry peaks and valleys peaks, peaks and all valleys. the time there was nothing better than going into canada at the four seasons and having my own bow day and everything you know what i mean oh yeah absolutely yeah no but i mean that so that's what it always nobody even balked at them but so but you know that. a lot of people no i noticed it <laughs> yeah. i just uh, look i enjoy having my asshole uh clean <laughs> jets of water up your asshole but see, but see women always probably think that derek and i are like players and stuff we're not we're just looking for for a girl that'll accept us that loves you for who you are <laughs> You know. Speaking of assholes getting cleaned, if you had to yell for Dennis the intern, I like to ask everybody. Our intern that's running around here, he's he's terrible. If you had to call his name, how would you call it? Dennis. That's how you do it. Yeah, uh, it's pretty pretty. It's like just like a no, Dennis. You you called him like he was sitting right behind you, like Dennis. I need my paper. I don't know. Is he sitting behind? Is there? He's upstairs, oh, probably. Okay. No, I've never met Dennis. I don't think so. Have I? No. Am I supposed to pretend like I've met Dennis? No, you, no, you no, might no, not no. have met him because you never know where he is. But if you had him, then if you need him. 
I was, I was well, cause, well, what if I then if he's gonna really come down here, it's gonna be fucking awkward. Because you haven't met him yet. <laughs> we, yeah, like, are we doing a bit now? Like I don't. No, know. I'm just like, really. I ask every guest. <laughs> yes, every guest. If they had to call for him. Yeah. I don't. I don't need him. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good answer. That's what answer there. You got time for a quick game? Uh, yeah, man. I got. I'm. I'm in a rush. All right. We got time for a quick game, Frankie. Frankie Frankie's like, you know, Frankie does sign language over there, but I don't speak sign language. So we're going to play a little game called Rehashing Your Hashtag. Okay. All right? Oh, Basically, shit. we uh, during Stinker Tinker time, we stalked your Twitter feed. <laughs> we're going to read you a couple of your <laughs> tweets, and you're going to tell us, what the hell was I thinking? On February 8th, 2015, at 8.56 p.m., you said, Kanye West wardrobe provided by the Salvation Army thrift shop in Linden. Hashtag Grammys. Uh, yeah, because Kanye West was dressed like an asshole, if I remember correctly. <laughs> and when I was a train conductor, we'd always pass the Salvation Army thrift shop in Linden, and we'd oh, yeah. see people come out in these, like, fucking ridiculous outfits. <laughs> so that was more of, like, a like a locals joke for people. I'm really going to be embarrassed, but keep going, because I... I mean, assholes dress like assholes, right? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you would at know. At least pick funny. Derek D. Derek D. Com. Everybody, you're muted. I love that you just keep plugging. Muted. Muted. Which will be muted. I muted myself, by the way. <laughs> Did you see that? Go ahead. Derek D. Com will be refreshing. On August, stop. Nobody loves Derek D. Like Derek D. I think you That's love you true. more than That's, your mom loves you, no, and now she really loves you. The you most. make it sound way worse than it is, and I just, Ryan. I just, I just, no, uh, I don't think he's cocky. I just, I, I just did that to play along before. <laughs> August thirteenth, twenty fifteen, at six forty two p.m. You said Sesame Street on HBO will address ed edgier topics: Big Berg's gender issues, Snuffy's depression, and Gordon's Black Panther past. <laughs> <laughs> there was no, yeah, because they, they, there was an announcement that new episodes of Sesame Street were going to come out on HBO. HBO. Did that ever happen, by the way? Uh, I, you know, I, I think know. it has. I think it has. Because it was huge news There's when it happened. There's been no, like, commercials for it or anything. I haven't seen. It was huge news when it happened. But, it yeah, was so huge. I, just, I figured, fuck it. I, you huge. Know, <laughs> when I'm like, elected. If you're going to put it on HBO, let's, let's make it interesting. You know? <laughs> uh, last one. On February 22nd, 2016, 8, 24 p.m., you said, Donald Trump being pro-choice in 1998 doesn't mean he isn't really pro-life now. People change. In 1998, I thought 311 was a good band. <laughs> yeah, because when I was in high school, um, and, and I've recently gotten back in touch with a lot of people I went to high school with, because I did a movie, an independent movie called Kill Mills with, with some guys. Uh, and basically what it is is like, uh, you know, like not another teen movie or any of those parody yeah, yeah. movies, but this one's about Quentin Tarantino films. We took all seven oh, that's Quentin great. Tarantino oh, that's films interesting. and we, we made an independent movie parody. It should hopefully be out by the summer. But So I did it with two guys who I was in high school with and a whole cast and crew. And they're still obsessed with 311. And I remember when I was I like, love 311, bro. I'm not going to lie. Uh, See, some was, songs. 311. Well, I was, I was, some songs that are good, but like when I was 15, 16, that was like our thing. Like our mm. parents would drop us off at PNC Art Center, and then we would find like the kids that were uh, a couple years ahead of us from Monsignor Donovan High School where we went. They'd have the beer. And they'd have the beer and the yeah. weed. And we would get fucked up. And we're like, yeah, man, this is awesome. <laughs> and a lot of these guys, like, I'm like, I thought they were okay because I was a teenager, you know? But, yeah. like, I would never listen to that shit now. Oh, I, I see him every year. I'm sorry. I love come it. original. You've got to come original. Oh, it's fucking awful. All entertaining. It, it could be you worse, are. right? That's awful. Your Twitter feed's uh, very entertaining. I'm not, I'm not going to lie, <laughs> thank man. You, thank you. Um, Ryan, thank you so much for coming out, man. Thanks, we man. really appreciate pleasure. it. it was a this lot one will fun. actually make it to air. Oh, let's hope so. <laughs> oh, were the mics on for this one? They, they were on. Right, Everything's good. recorded. I double-checked everything. Uh, on the way out, speaking of your Twitter feed, where can the uh, PBR posse stalk you? Uh, please, Ryan Mar Comedy, uh, R Y A N M A H E R Comedy, Instagram at Ryan Mar Comedy. Uh, I'm on Facebook as well. Shoot me a friend request or whatnot. We're all good. Right. I appreciate it. Anything else you want to plug? Uh, yeah, Kill Mills. Hopefully, it'll be out by the summer. I have a DVD for sale. Uh, fuck it. Oh, we'll we didn't it. even we didn't even get into the DVD. It's been selling CD well. Thing. Actually, just real quick before we leave, you were busting my balls I was. so bad, and it's been selling. You well. know what? I'm gonna put that conversation up on Patreon, but I think it's only <laughs> I think you'll only hear you because I don't know if I was recorded. <laughs> I, I guess I was in there though. Yeah, you two, it'll a, be yeah. you two talking to nobody. Yeah, why Derek, not, Derek? Do you want to plug anything? You're gonna mute me anyway. No, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> Uh, Fastlane Daily. We're owned by Time Inc. now, so we got a new studio. Congratulations. Today, so thank you. Check that out. Uh, just Fastlane Daily on YouTube. PBR Podcast. You can find us on the web, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Us. Podcast. Give us some love, and we will love you back. Ryan, thank you so thank much. Thank you, man. Thanks, See man. You.